Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Business in the Real World, you know, real world pragmatic business advice. I'm delighted to welcome Adam Prosser today. Hi, Adam. Thanks, Gary. MD of uh, Active Internet Marketing. We'll learn a bit more about that later on. Um, but before we start, Adam, I just want to kind of get a sense of the environment out there right now. There's a lot going on with the virus and stuff. Um, from your perspective, the people you see and talk to, what kind of challenges are they facing at the minute? Well, we um, deal with a big variety of businesses, uh, as you know, Gary. I think for us um, and some businesses out there, it's actually created more opportunity. So uh, we've been quite fortunate where more businesses have moved online. It's created opportunity for us and we've been able to capitalise on that. I guess my concern is more for, for other businesses and I guess the the unpredictability um, that businesses are facing. I think as a small business, um, often you have you have enough challenges anyway. Um, things are, are always changing, perhaps within your industry, but also yeah. legislation and all sorts of things. So um, there's a lot to, to deal with and juggle, but the unpredictableness, um, I think, is is terrifying for some businesses. You know, um, if you just think currently, people, um, hospitality, they don't know yeah. what stock to order. Don't know what staff to put on, um, and um, yeah, it's it's very hard for them. So, um, I guess if I if we can do anything, then it's just making sure that they get consistently getting enough inquiries. So yeah, that's yeah. Um, you know what we're doing for our clients. And you mentioned staff. I mean, it seems to me a lot of my clients are talking about it's really difficult to find good people. It's difficult to keep them. It seems to be an employees marketplace now. Are you are you seeing that? Um, I. I I've seen it in other businesses, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Sometimes um, I'll just walk into somewhere and I can see the amount of adverts and I can see yeah. that there's there's nobody there. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think it's definitely real. And when I speak to other people, um, for us, we, we're quite fortunate, again, in, in that way. Um, quite a few of my colleagues have, have worked with me for, for long, long periods. Um, we've been um, fortunate in retaining uh, staff for quite long periods yeah. um, but we work very hard to do that mm. um, so um, it's a, a constant sort of focus of ours I guess to make sure that um, people are happy people are engaged people mm. feel um, that we listen to them mm. um, we run a, a very flat uh, structure we don't have a huge hierarchy yeah. um, so I try to um, make sure everyone's approachable and yeah. uh, happy to talk and it's definitely paid dividends yeah Mm. And when people are out there, businesses are out there, we've seen the, the lockdown and the virus has had an impact on people going out into the real world to shop. So they're coming back into the digital world. There's an absolute cacophony of you know, information and advertising and stuff like that. Just now, how do businesses really get you know, their target audience to raise their hand and go, yeah, I am actually interested in what you've got? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, for us, I would say... The, the first piece of advice we, we give anybody when we sit down to discuss their marketing um, is to be, be really careful about what activity they are doing actually um, because there, there's so many options I think for a small business and um, things can always be positioned um, in, a, in, in a way that seems you know, mm. great and really positive. Um, the question I generally ask people first is, is there a market for your product or service? Right. Um, or do you need to um, create a market for it? And with most small businesses, often we find that they are fulfilling a need in the area. There is a market already for their product or service. Um, they're just trying to become one of the options as yeah. a person yeah. to fulfill it. Um, and obviously being uh, at the top of Google, um, you, you've got a, you're going to put yourself in front of lots and lots of people that are already searching for your product. Yeah, yeah. So rather than you um, seeking out a buyer, um, there are buyers who are looking mm. for your product service all day, every day. Yeah. Um, if you can be the one that they find, um, then it can make a huge difference. Yeah. So I think it's really important to get that across to people. It seems quite obvious, mm. uh, but a lot of um, marketing, you're, you're trying to put yourself in front of the buyer. And that's often uh, a much harder route, really. So I often think it's one of those questions around, you know, you, you've got two choices. You either create something and go out there and say to people, do you want to buy this? Mm. Or you identify a good target market and you create something that they will want to buy. Exactly. Um, yeah. which, which kind of brings me on to your, your business. Who's the, who's the ideal target market for you? Yeah. Well, we um, very much focus on independently owned private businesses. 
um, so that we can deal with a decision maker, um, we can get decisions, um, get things done, um, but we can target literally any industry. We deal with a huge variety. Mm. We could be dealing with professional services, solicitors, there's accountants and so on, uh, right through to tradespeople um, and a- every type of business in between. Right. Um, the principles of what we do uh, largely are the same no matter what the, the industry we're in. Um, but we, we do like to deal with a decision maker. Mm. And and when you talk to the decision maker, are you offering them a wide range of service? I mean, we've we've talked and we are going to talk about SEO, but what else does the company do? Um, so yeah, we do on top of SEO, um, we're putting a lot of focus into um, data and business automation, and we're starting to offer new products within that. Um, we do build a lot of websites for people. Um, where uh, we dabble in social media, although I feel that. Um, it's becoming more and more complex Mm -hmm. and people should um, focus on um, uh, uh, having a a person who's focused on that, fulfilling that for them. And we we have some partners we work with. Um, We're also involved in in email marketing, Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit of video. So we do, we do have a cross section of products, but SEO is, is definitely. And and you find that um, small business owners, I mean, sometimes I speak to them and, and it's very clear that they feel slightly overwhelmed with the choice. And they might go out and get some really good advice, and then the very next person they speak to contradicts that advice. I mean, how do how do small business owners deal with this kind of ever shifting environment for social media and, and marketing? Yeah, it's it, again really very tricky for them. I completely agree. Yeah. Um, hence, why I try and take them back to that question. You know, are, are people already searching for that product and service? Yeah. And if they want to be in front of people that are looking with an often an, an immediate need. Mm-hmm. Um, then the search engine, I feel, will be the best one every time. Hence, why we focus on that. Yeah, and so from that perspective, then let's let's kind of try and demystify SEO a little bit. So, at the very highest level, what what is SEO? Um, yeah, re- very good question. Again. <laughs> <laughs> I would say um, what I try and take people right back to in terms of demystifying it is um, the principle that um, the search engine, predominantly Google. Um, wants to satisfy the user. So Google wants to provide the best, most appropriate and accurate uh, result to any searcher that is using its search engine. So um, if you bear that principle in mind, um, then you need to have um, the most accurate and relevant information um, on your website Mm. um, for Google to prioritize you. How it then judges that relevance uh, and accurateness is very, very complex. So there's about 400 different factors um, that it will be looking at um, to decide who's the best and who's the worst. Um, but I feel if you um, are always putting very forward, uh, accurate and good quality and relevant information um, within all your communications, then then that's definitely going in the right direction. And what role does um, originality play in that? absolutely critical um so if you have um what's called duplicate content essentially if you're taking content from somewhere else and uh plagiarizing it um then google will immediately discredit you completely so um your content needs to be completely original and it needs to have um its own value um it needs to again come back to that point it needs to satisfy the user um, and it, it's not going to do that if, if you've just taken it from somewhere else and not put an effort in. Okay. So originality is important. What else kind of skews your, you know, I guess we talk about Google rankings, but what, what else skews the rankings so that Google thinks favorably of you? So um, definitely original information, like we just said. Yeah. Um, it needs to be in the correct format. So uh, you're understanding the importance of formatting the information correctly. Um, so um, there's different... Um, metadata, meta details, um, uh, headers, all of the various sort of technical elements that are all essentially related to formatting. Um, so the information needs to be for- formatted correctly. Um, so that um, not only that the user can read it and will benefit from it, but Google's needs to understand it in the first place itself to decide whether it wants to include it or not within the rankings. 
And it's, you, you mentioned the website, but obviously there's things like Google My Business and other areas where you can have content and, and, and talk about your business. Are they, is there some kind of link between all of these different sources that Google is effectively stacking one on top of another? Definitely. So Google My Business, as an example, um, does actually have its own algorithm. Um, so it's um, slightly aside from the normal um, search search rankings, um, but um, similar principles apply. So accuracy of information, yeah. uh, original information, um, correctly formatted yeah. uh, are all key parts within that. Yeah. Um, what um, all of those um, elements are doing is sending positive signals mm. and um, backing up um, other sources um, so that Google can um, essentially um, build credibility. Mm. And does Google... Is there any transparency at all, or is this kind of complex algorithm the way that they decide completely hidden from from everybody? Um, it is um, pretty much completely hidden. Um, you can sometimes um, get some um, tweets from senior um, people involved with uh, slight clues, right. um, but um, generally it is it is very very hidden. Um, a good thing to look at is. Um, patents that Google are filing. You can right. try and um, decipher, I guess, their, their mindset in where things might might be going. Um, but I, I definitely think um, if you've got an awareness of all of the elements and the technical nature of them, um, it, that obviously is critical. But I still think some of it is logic and common sense mm. and coming back to the principle that Google wants to satisfy the user. Yeah. Um, so things can often become clearer from quite a logical point of view as well. Yeah. So would Google, for example, let, let's take a, a brand, a, a business that's got multiple channels and things like that. Is Google, when it's deciding where you appear in the search results, is it looking at the, the amount of output across some of the other channels? Does it look at how active you are in Facebook or LinkedIn or any of those other places? It, it will definitely look at those. It will look at, um, again, credibility. So look at reviews on Facebook as an example. Yeah. Um, to make sure that they're they're favourable, um, to a certain degree, um, the volume of them is important. Right. To um, you know, you could have one review and it'd be five star, and you've got a five star rating. Mm. If you've got two hundred reviews and you're at a four point nine, mm. um, then that could be worth a lot more than a one review five star. So sure, the, the volume sure. of there builds up a picture as well. Um, so yeah, all of those channels are sending a signal. Yeah. Um, again, further building up. Um, credibility across the board really and would Google um, prioritize or positively weight in any way you know when you were using some of its other products like I mean it owns YouTube doesn't it yeah um, YouTube will send a signal as a social channel yeah. um, but um, if you were spending uh, an, as, an amount on pay-per-click advertising as an example yeah. um, that shouldn't have any effect because um, it's quite disingenuous and a bit um, yeah. manipulative for that, for that to happen. So. And you'd expect to be in the ad placings if you were spending a lot on PPC anyway. Yeah, and, and then... yeah they should be completely separated from each other and, and unrelated. Good. Yeah, I, I, they, they tell us they are. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I can, I'm sure they would never uh, mislead anybody. All right, so, so now we understand a little bit about what it is. Uh, for small businesses, why is it important then to invest time and effort and probably money at some point in in good SEO. Yeah, I think um, as you just mentioned, really uh, bigger businesses and large businesses you kind of mentioned about. Yeah. Um, I actually think it's more important for small businesses than anyone else. Hence, why we focus on that market. Yeah. I think if you've got um, a limited marketing budget, then I definitely feel you should use it putting in front of people that already have an immediate need and searching. Yeah. Um, you will often find that sometimes the biggest business or provider in the area is not the one at page one, position one. So um, there is an opportunity for um, small businesses to um, invest in the right company that can support them and they can actually get ahead of people that in um, more traditional senses um, would be ahead of them, you know, in terms of size and um, scale of the business um, so um, I think for, for small businesses it provides more of an opportunity sometimes than, than larger companies and, and I know uh, this might be an awkward question for me to ask someone in your position but is this is 
early stage SEO something that people can start thinking about doing for themselves in some way? Yeah, definitely. I've, I think um, it to be page one, position one and the leader um, in your given area, yeah. um, you probably will need in the majority of cases an expert um, or, or a, 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 yeah. a business to help you. However, um, you can certainly improve um, your standing um, on your own. Mm-hmm. And um, in terms of doing that, we have um, quite a lot of free information we give away on our website. People can download white papers and yeah. uh, information there. Um, to kind of summarize that, um, I think the, the accuracy of information, again, yeah. uh, is key. So making sure that um, the information you, you put online is, is always accurate and correct. Yeah. Um, I would say um, having a consistency of that information. Mm-hmm. That um, doesn't mean it's necessarily always the same because we already said you don't want to duplicate that. But having a, a consistent um, voice in the message you put across, having a consistent um, quality in any text that you publish um, is going to be key. Um, again, making sure that your website's formatted in the correct way. Um, speed of your website is important and you, you can influence that. So, so um, usability in, in the general sense. Definitely, yeah. You want to make sure that you've got good secure hosting. You want to make sure that your um, images on your website are of um, a good quality standard, but the file sizes are, um, are not too big. Um, you want to make sure that you're, you're mobile friendly and it can be used on different devices. Yeah. Um, so there's probably lots of um, things that people can do to, to help themselves before yeah. they then speak to me. Mm. Um, what what really, um, I guess I would advise though is, um, you know, if we're talking about a solicitor, accountant or a tradesperson, as we mentioned before, yeah. um, a lot of the time they don't, they don't want to get involved with their website. Yeah. They'd much rather be busy offering their service so yeah, yeah. Um, someone like me can take all of that worry away yeah so let's let's think about that let's let's kind of imagine a small business who's in this position they're keen to be becoming to be you know google page one at least and, and at the top of page one if they can they decide that they haven't got the time or the knowledge to do that what's the first step for them in getting you know proper professional help so the first thing um we would do when we sit down with them um is make sure we've got the right strategy so um, we've spoke already, is there a market for it? So we have softwares um, that are free, that are supplied by Google, where we can go on and identify um, the most suitable keywords that people are using to search for their products or service. Um, you don't want to put the cart before the horse. You want to make sure that um, you understand the market before you try and appeal to it. So you do that for your, for your keyword research. So that, that's the first step in just making sure that we understand what the market is searching for. Um, what, what happens next? So then we want to make sure that we've got the best offering. So um, making sure that your offering is clear, concise, make sure you're, you're breaking it down into the relevant services and um, communicating about each of those clearly, um, making sure that you've got um, real tangible USPs yeah. for each of those services. Um, making sure that you've got um, you consider the buying motives of potential clients and making sure that you're speaking to them mm-hmm. you know are you uh, certified accredited um, is there some sort of quality control um, all of those things that people would expect to see um, we will advise on those and help people strategize how they um, would put those forward um, before we even begin about talking about the technical nature of the SEO. Mm. And what role does geography play then? Because obviously if I was a, a plasterer or a plumber in a town and I just wanted to really get focused and come up at the top of the list in that sort of area, how does that pan out? So that that's quite an interesting one because when you look at local SEO, um, which most small businesses would be requiring, um, geography is absolutely key. Um, and we know that people... Um, search in all different sorts of ways now, um, voice, using mobile devices, yeah. as well as just potentially typing in on a desktop. Um, so um, a lot of it comes back again, I think, to, to logical thinking. So Google will, um, for different business types, have a, uh, a tolerance of a net, uh, or a distance that um, it feels it will provide results within. So what I mean by that is if, um, 
you're sitting here and you want a, a sandwich for lunch or you want to go to a restaurant for lunch, yeah. Google's going to know that roughly you'll be prepared to travel a certain distance. Um, if you want a haircut, you'll, you'll travel a certain distance. If you want um, an expert air conditioning engineer to come and fix a problem that you've got, you'll be prepared to look at companies from further afield. Or if you want to go and spend tens of thousands of pounds on having uh, home improvements, a kitchen installed, yeah. you might be prepared to travel a lot further for that. So Google will have a distance that it feels is um, reasonable. I've always wondered about that when it's, you know, you see a lot of people searching for X near me. And that, yeah, that little yeah. phrase near me, it sounds like that's got quite a few yeah, parameters it's, attached Yeah, it's become a lot more popular, hasn't it? Yeah. And that um, near me, um, will uh, Google will have uh, a, a distance in mind depending on what the item is you're searching oh, for. Right. So it doesn't publish those again. We have to try and work that out. Right. We have to try and use logic to see what we feel is reasonable. Um, but different business types will want to cover different areas. It might be uh, the local towns. Yeah. It might be the few larger surrounding cities. It might be a region. So it can vary. Yeah. So we've talked... We've got, we've got the strategy. We're trying to understand the target market and what they're searching for. We've got a sense of the geography. What, what else do we need to consider before actually executing the SEO strategy? I think once you've, once you've got those in place, that will um, give you the makeup of um, what, we're, what we're trying to achieve. Um, really, at that point then, um, we want to communicate that information to Google, like we said, in the correct format, in the correct way, on all of the variables that it's looking at. And then through that, we wanna make sure that when a user does land on the site, all of those points are communicated to the user effectively um, so that they are ready to make a decision um, with the information that's there. And that, that goes back to the very original point then, that are you satisfying the user? So when a user lands on the site, if they can see all of those things, um, it should be easy for them to make a decision. Yeah, and, and so I guess this is a not something where you go, okay, I'd, I'd like to do SEO for my business. I flick a load of switches and the next day I arrive on, on page one at the top. So so what kind of timeline are we talking about? Yeah, no, it's a good point. Uh, the, a lot of what we are doing in our initial conversations with any business is managing their expectations. Right. We have to be um, really clear with them what they can expect mm -hmm. and within what sort of time frame they can expect that. Um, to get... Um, on page one of Google, um, even if you're doing okay, you might be on page three or four, um, to get page one is gonna take at least six months yeah. um, of effort from uh, a professional organization like ours yeah. um, to, to make a difference. Because one, there's lots of elements, as we've already said. Two, uh, it's credibility. Mm -hmm. Google wants to see a consistency and it wants to see um, that it's not just happened and it could go as quick as it's come so yeah. there's a certain amount of time served um, as well involved um, so we need to manage expectations a lot um, but we can give a lot of transparency of what we're doing right. and what impact that's making so we can certainly um, keep people's nerves settled in between um, by showing them uh, quite gradual improvements yeah just, just thinking slightly more broadly about the way people use Google. So, so there's a couple of things that pop into my mind. You know, you, you search for something and Google's very proud of the fact that it's given you 1.2 million options in 0.43 seconds. Mm. So there's this, this tsunami of data that arrives. When it comes to searching, is there any kind of statistical evidence about how far people are prepared to go? I mean, I don't think I ever go to page two or page three. Um, there is lots and lots of stats from so many different sources, but yeah. they um, basically all say the same thing, that page one yeah. is where it's at. And you'd be amazed, if, again, you, anyone can Google this and there's lots of sources, but um, if you look at um, the click-through rate from um, different positions, mm. um, position one, two, and three, will get the vast, vast majority of all the traffic that's going through. Yeah. If you're in position 10 on page one, you're actually going to get still quite a, a small fraction of, of what's going on yeah. uh, proportionately on page one. Mm -hmm. and, and then j just thinking more broadly about the, the dangers here and, uh, and you know the traps that small businesses might fall into, because as you said, they're, they're probably people who've got limited marketing budgets. They're thinking very carefully about where they go with that marketing budget. Is, mm -hmm. Are there any things that they should avoid? 
Um, again, I would say it, it varies quite a lot depending on what you're selling. Uh, and I'll give you an example. Um, you want to make sure that you've you've got uh, the right keyword so that an educated um, buyer is going to approach you. So what I mean by that is if you were um, going to buy uh, a new LED television yeah, and you searched in Google uh, TV, yeah. you would get so many results coming up yeah. um, and you wouldn't really know what you want. If you then say, well, I might like a Samsung TV, for example, mm. and you search for Samsung TV, you're still going to get probably a huge amount of models yeah. and sizes and variants that are all available to you. If you say that you want um, a 55 inch Samsung LED TV, um, et cetera, et cetera, yeah. you're going to get a, a, a lot more specific result come through and probably find something that, that yeah. you want. And it goes on. So with, in every um, industry, in every type of business, we try to help them not only get a volume, but get the educated people that are ready to buy coming through to them as well. Yeah, that makes a point actually about searching with a bit more, you know, using Google search terms to, to really narrow the search down and exclude stuff that you don't Yeah, want. and people will, will go for a natural process. You know, you might not realize that you want a 55 inch and, and you, you start to do a bit of research and then you think, well, you definitely want a curved one or something, you know, yeah, so yeah. people go for a natural um, process anyway, but if you can get them at the end when they're ready to buy, you've not wasted all of that money all the way through the process, so... So, I mean, that, that's helped a lot to demystify SEO. I'm just thinking, you know, you mentioned some of the other things you do, but let's just finish this part uh, yeah. off with an idea of once the strategy has been defined in terms of your company, are you putting together a package of things across the, the you know, the website development you do and the other mar digital marketing stuff to have an overall impact? Yeah, so once um, the... Um the keywords have been confirmed and we've agreed the cost and etc. cetera. Um, basically the person can leave all of that in our hands. Um, but then we um, will go ahead and increase the traffic. Then we, we wanna make sure we're getting the conversions right. So we would look at the website itself, look at various data points, um, trying to help them improve the site, improve the conversion rate, um, help them um, gather data when, from people when they're on the site. Then you discuss perhaps marketing to those people through email and stuff. So, yeah, there's lots and lots of other um, things we can discuss. And, and what about the kind of um, distortion of, of the environment? You know, there's a lot of stuff around fake reviews and fake traffic and stuff like that. Can you protect people from that sort of thing? To, to a very limited degree, to be honest. Yeah. Um, people uh, can put reviews uh, on various channels and um they they could have potentially not even uh, dealt with that business yeah. um that uh, you know it, which is quite sad really um but i feel um there are obviously dedicated review companies that will only allow people to review if if they have interacted and purchased from you so right. that that's can be a good option i think you can um respond to reviews in a clear way and and often quite um clearly show what the real facts are um, but it is um, it is a very difficult area there's certainly not um, a magic wand that, that we can wave on that one okay so if we just summarize then for small businesses get the strategy right understand the target audience um, and then get a professional in to, to help you out yeah definitely and I, and I think in between um, we've got lots of free information on our website that yeah. people can take advantage of as well and um, we're more than happy to sit down with people, give them a free consultation. So, um, you know, people should feel comfortable to discuss it. Um, and, you know, we're happy to give out information like today as well. So, sure. sure. All right. Brilliant. So uh, we're going to take a break. We'll come back in part two, talk a bit more about Adam's business journey and what it takes to succeed uh, in business.